Welcome to another edition of Totally Awesome Fishing where we aim to give you the best fishing tips that get the fish on the bank as fast as possible. Now I'm here down in deepest Hampshire near Andover at a place called Diva Springs. It's a trout fishery and not as it one of Britain's top trout fisheries but I've got a brand new fly that's red hot off the press nobody knows about and we're going to try it out here and just see how good it is. Let me show you a letter I have from Sid Knight, the guy that ties the flies. So, what, what is it about this fly? Well, there it is, look. You can just see it in the, in the butt there. Brand new, brand new design. Now, here's the email I had from Sid. Hi, Graham. Thanks for the information. Regarding the actual fish landed, the angler had, wait for this, 26 that he landed with 13 lost, with many more takes and pulls. The best day's fishing he's ever had. It was a new pearly headed daddy, long legs, long shank, size 10. Fish were coming from Delbury fishery, mixed sizes up to four pounds, and that was on windy conditions. He's since been back and reordered more of the same fly. I'm not surprised. Other fishermen at the fishery kept coming to him asking him what he was using as none of them had anything like that fly. I've got it, brand new, hot off the press. Let's see if it works. This new pearly daddy long legs has actually three dressings. The first one here is the standard dressing one. The second one has a muddler head to it for surface fishing. And the third one is for stalking. It's got a bead on the front, like a tungsten bead to take it down deep. This one is the one I'm going to be using today and I can assure you I think we've got a very good chance of catching trout on one of these. Possibly that one's going to be my favourite. I work straight away, third, third cast. I put it right out on the lake, stripped it in, bang. Got to get all the line back now, I must have cast 30 yards. This is, this is a nice fish. thing is, I don't want to lose this fly. I want to play the fish hard, but I don't want to lose the fly.
Well, that was a shame losing that last fish. I mean, it happens. Can't help that fish came off, but it shows you absolutely engulfed this fly. Now, one of the problems you're going to get this time of the year, it's bright, the water's cool, so the fish are going to be moving, but this sunlight's created a weed bloom and it's popping up on the surface and the scummy bits are laying on the surface. So we, if you're a long caster, you can have big problems because you can't strip that fly line in without snagging all these pieces of weed you know, that are laying on the surface. So what I do is I change tactics from long casting. I'm going to go what they call pocket fishing. It's an American term. You're just blipping at the fish really, really close about oh, 10 feet, 12 feet. That's all watching it sink. But most important of all, get down to the depth that the trout are feeding at and watch for their mouths because it is just two snaps. One, the fly is in, two, the fly is out. Nail them on that first snap. God, I just took another one up. I came down to the small lake and just saw one laying in the margins. All the other anglers have moved away. Just like I mentioned about pocket fishing. Right in, right in, down and close underneath. I just jiggled this uh, daddy long legs fly up and down in the water and he sucked it back. Not a bad fish. I think this is over four pounds. Oh man, he's taken off now. Oh, he's going in the weed. Come out the weed. Get out the weed. I tell you what, guys, this fish is about. I think he's over four pounds. I think he could be over five. Let's hope this one doesn't come off. I'm so impressed with this fly. If it stays in the fish. Yeah, now that's what you call a diva-sized trout. That is a rainbow trout of classic proportions. What a beauty. That's what I call totally awesome daddy long legs fishing. Now, did I tell you about that pocket fishing? Due to the weed just dropping it down vertically, just check that rainbow trout out. That is a clonker. And I'll tell you why that's a perfect specimen. It's about five and a half ish. And what you're looking for is the white flash of this mouth here. You've got to watch, you've got to be visual. You've actually got to see them snap their jaws on top of that fly. But I'm telling you what, that daddy long list, they absolutely died yesterday. This one's made up for the one I lost. But you know what fish I want to like? I want another one. That's a nice fish, that's a nice fish, that's a nice, oh what a cast, so I say it myself, and he is ignoring it with total disdain, yes, close in, try again, I'm not altogether sure he's, here he comes, here he comes, is he going to turn off it, he's going to turn off it, oh, right, once more, don't be afraid to give them more than one cast. Because very often they'll get completely aggravated. And you might just antagonise them into snapping the fly. Lots of short casts, lots of put it right in their face, absolutely right here, right on their nose. You can put it six feet away, they can see it. But I figure if you put it in their face, if they're going to take it, they
just engulf that fly again. Do you know what? I think they should be banned. This one's even bigger than the last one. Oh, it barely fits in the net. Just look at that fish. That is magnificent. Well, what can I say? It's, it's right in the root of the bottom of my jaw, and there it is. It's chewed, it's bedraggled, and I'll tell you what, I think it's this little green tag on there, that, and the bead, gold bead at the front to get it down, the tungsten bead, and that bit of gold at the back. But that is a chunky trout. Look at that one. Here's a tip, degrease your leader with just plain washing up liquid about every 15 minutes, especially when it's still like this, it helps the fly cut down through the water because you want it sinking fast. And I actually get it on my fingers and rub it all over the fly as well. Doesn't look much, much like a daddy long legs now, does it really? But it, uh, I assure you it is and it's a good catcher. Another tip, you get to like September and the sun at 12 o'clock you think it's overhead, but you're wrong, it's going down low. So there's a lot of shadow lines. You've got to make the best of the available light if you're going stalking bigger fish. So between, let's say, 11 and 1 in the autumn, that's when you need to be out on the water spotting. The other bonus is, a lot of the anglers have all packed up, got tired, and they're either up the pub or they've gone back to the lodge for some lunch. The fish are rested and they'll take. Yeah, there we go, I just got one right under my feet in the margin. There's not another angler on the lake, he's just laying there, he's calmed down. I'll tell you what, it's not a bad old fish either. That's not a bad fish. Not a bad fish at all. That was a good action, I was pleased with that one. But let me show you how to fish this fly, because a lot of people, you know, they don't really know how to jiggle this fly, and you've got to get it on a vertical plane in front of the fish. So let me just show you, and see if we can pick it up in the water, so you can see, the, the, the literally the plane that I'm working in is, is, is a matter of inches and in how I get it to pulse. It might help you catch the extra fish. This is how you want the fly to pulse. Just bouncing up and down. There's even small roach or something looking at it because it's just a natural way that these insects look as though they're struggling to get up to the surface. If you can do that to the fly, there's even small fish coming up to it. Then you've got a really good chance of catching. Just pulse it just under the surface like this. In a three or four inch plane, just pop it up, let it low go down. Pop it up, let it go down. What a lot of fisheries do is they leave these nice natural openings for you to cast through so you don't get tangled and they also give you a nice screening there of rushes. But the trout know those openings mean anglers and anglers mean danger. So they're more likely not to be in the openings where the anglers stand but along the front of the rushes. So don't be afraid to go creeping along there, looking close and then target your fish. And I'll show you how I cast for them as well. 
because this is something different that's quite important. Ordinarily you'd be casting out a nice big long line, you let the fly line straighten out, the leader straightens out, and it all sinks gently to the surface of the water and the fly goes down. Forget that for margin fishing and for pocket fishing. What I try and do is to roll it over fast, I want to punch the fly through the surface film quickly and I want it going down vertically. I don't want that leader dragging and slowing up the sink of the fly. So I'm just going to be fishing one loop of line here, look for a fish, two false casts, punch it through the surface and try and hold the rod high and let the leader go down like this. Hold the fly, just jiggle it, just jiggle it. If the fish is moving, pick up once, punch it through again. So you're sending it in there with a bit of a velocity, trying to get it through and down to the fish length, you know, the fish's plane where he's feeding at. So you're right in the margins, this one was hooked. Had to walk it around from the other side. That's another good fish. That's a load of fish on that daddy long leg. Yeah. Now that daddy long legs is what I call a totally awesome fly. Six or seven pounds that one. Don't say anything, just don't say anything. <laughs> I can't believe it. I mean, I've got two or three good flies, folks. I've got two or three good flies, but this one's really up there with them. It is really up there. Oh, and he's off. But look at that. Eight trout hook now. I mean, they just keep coming and coming. Right, guys, here's a situation I've been looking for. I don't know whether it's going to come off. There is a trout laying in a cold water spring on some gravel right in under this weed here. I'm going to set the camera up and see if I can't get it to tape by lowering the fly and just jiggling it up and down, you know, like I showed you. Same fly, and no, no reason to change this fly at all. Eight trout have told me there's no reason to change this fly. So I'm just going to see if I can set this up for you. It might work, it might not. Now I'm right by this tree, and there's a bit of an inflow from the other lake. I don't know if you're even going to get to see this trout laying there. There he is, there. And what I'm going to jiggle for is just laying with his head in a little bit of spring current there. So I see if I can lower the fly in. There he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Oh, he turned off it. Oh, got him, got him, got him, got him, got him, got him, Jesus Christ. Oh man, right on cue, right on cue on the camera. You don't get to see this on every fishing program, I can tell you. That wasn't even a calf, really. that wasn't even a calf. Oh, and he's going nuts, it's going nuts. Don't give me all this business. Why is it fighting? Oh, jeez, why is it fighting so hard? Come on, oh, no, he's still not, still not giving up. Oh, yeah. That's it for today. That is totally awesome fishing. Trout fishing, anyway. But wait, there could be more coming in the next programme.
And do you know what? I wouldn't mind catching some of the size of that fly.